Well, regular maintenance should be performed daily and weekly, monthly, semi-annual, as well as annual. We're going to talk today about weekly maintenance on your boiler today on The Boiling Point. Welcome to The Boiling Point. We have a familiar face. Actually, your last two have been with Michael Taylor and we're still talking about boiler maintenance. This week, we're gonna talk a little bit about weekly maintenance. So we're gonna get started here. Mike, appreciate you hanging out again and sharing all of the knowledge that you've got. So uh, we're gonna start first weekly maintenance and let's start with the pilot and the main fuel valves. Talk about what we need to do from a weekly standpoint. On well, a weekly standpoint, you just need to make sure that they operate, that when the, you shut the boiler off either by breaking a limit or turning the switch off that they actually close. So you just turn the switch off to the boiler while it's running and you listen for the valves to actually make contact and close. Okay. They will click. If you've got a hydromotor valve, then you can see it move. Okay. But a solenoid valve, all you can do is listen for it. I was looking at the um, CSD1 recommendation and they said RL. So the word of the day is RL, A U R A L, and we both didn't have a clue what that was. So I looked it up and it's actually listen. So that's what you're doing is you're listening for that switch. Okay, good. Um, and as far as the pilot, the only time you can do it is when the actual boiler is starting up. That's when the pilot will, will energize when it's lighting a pilot, but you, it's, a, it's always a solenoid valve. You can listen to it. You can hear it actually make and break. Okay. And if you have uh, meters, probably a good time to check out what's going on. Sure. If, if you're, when the thing closes down, you can look at your meter and make sure it stopped. It's going to stop because the, the gas stopped going through it. Okay. All right. So why don't we move next to the uh, to gauge glass. And what do, what do we need to do? I know this is a daily thing that you can look at, but also weekly. But what, what are we going to do from a weekly? Yeah, daily you're typically going to look at it to make sure it's not leaking. Uh, weekly, you need to take a closer look at the glass and just make sure that it's not getting etched. Okay. Uh, etching in, will happen inside of it strictly from steam erosion. Okay. And when it gets etched, it'll actually get cloudy looking in the area where it's etched. It won't be clear where you can see all the way through it. It'll get cloudy. If it gets cloudy, it's etched and it's, so it's getting thinned out and needs to be replaced. Okay. And so we're looking at this on a, from a low water cutoff? I mean, is that kind of what we're looking at? In this well, it doesn't affect the low water cutoff, but that's your visual image of how much water is in the boiler. Right. So if it gets etched up, you can't see it, and then it could blow out and cause lots of problems with your controls with water and steam on them. And, right. Okay. And it's a safety hazard in the boiler room as well if, if it's down close like this. Okay. Okay, well, let's move on to the uh, motors in the boiler room. And um, this is something from a daily standpoint that you will actually get real familiar with sounds. And that's pretty much what you're going to be looking for um, or listening for, I should say, as far as the motors in the boiler room. Yeah, because you, you, when you're there every day, you know what they sound like. Mm -hmm. And so you need to actually pay attention to them because over a period of time, just slow changes, you won't pay any attention to it. So you need to really focus on the motors, you know, at least weekly to make sure that they're not having some abnormal bearing noises or vibration mm. happening on your blower motor, your oil pump motor, or your feed water pump motors, because that, that can mean that a bearing is going out and you're going to have a failure. Typically a bearing noise is kind of a high squeal type or what, what is Or just that? a grinding noise. Oh, grinding noise, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and you'll see some vibration from it as well. I mean, when this burner is running, you should be able to set a nickel up on its edge and it's set there on the cabinet. Okay. If it, that motor is going out or the blower wheel is out of balance, it's not going to set up there. It's going to bounce it off from the floor. Okay. You set that on there. I'm taking it. <laughs> well, this next one is really for low pressure uh, boilers that we're checking from a weekly standpoint, but that's a low water cutoff. So why don't you go through that, Mike? Right. We'd, went over previously on high pressure bores, how you blow this down every day. On a low pressure bore, the code only recommends that you do it 
once a week. You don't have to do it daily. So you, you blow, you open the valve up and blow the water out of the low water cutoff until the burner shuts down. That tells you that the low water cutoff is working. Okay, and then just shut it right back. Just shut it right back. As soon as the burner shuts down, shut it back off and your level will be right there and the burner will start back up. Okay. Well, Mike, I think a lot of times people um, take for granted on the burner that this thing's just gonna come on and when it's on that everything is operating correctly. And we probably need to go through the burner somehow to be able to find out, you know, how, is this thing working right? You know, how, how do we do that? Yeah, and the main, the main point with the burner, the main safety point is the scanner, which is looking at the flame, making sure that you've got a good flame while it's putting fuel in the, in the boiler. Okay. So at least weekly, you need to check to make sure that scanner is working properly, that it will shut the boiler down if it, the flame goes out, that it's not seeing a false flame signal. Okay. And you're logging that flame signal? Yeah, you should be logging that actually daily, which will be on your control, tell you what your flame signal is, and you log that in your log book every day. But then once a week, you need to check to make sure that it actually works and shuts everything down like it's supposed to. Okay. When you lose a, the signal. On some burners, you can have a, you've got a scanner that's out available to where you can actually pull it off, just put your hand over it okay. and see that the burner shuts down. Mm -hmm. It should shut down within four seconds of doing that okay. by code and log that. Some burners, you can't get to it, so you can just shut your main gas valve off. All right. So you, you simply just shut it off and the burner will shut down and it should do it again within four seconds because right, so it, it loses the signal so it should go out and should fail on a flame out. Okay, and you're, and you're basically logging that time, you know, that for sure it's done this in four seconds. Right, just okay. make sure it, done, it does it within four seconds. Right. Typically it's gonna do it within two seconds, but four is what is the max. Okay, why don't we move to the uh, combustion management and talk a little bit about linkage first, you know, and what, what are we supposed to do with the linkage? Well, basically, you're just checking the linkages to make sure that they're tight, that it, nothing has slipped, that they go back to the same place, which is with linkages, they're going to be close because you've got hysteresis. So when it changes direction, there's always a little bit of slop, mm. which is called hysteresis. So wow. it never... The great word, hysteresis. It never goes back to the exact same spot because the swivels swivel okay. <laughs> so that doesn't keep it exact okay and so you've got linkage obviously on some burners but then you also have linkage list burners and what are we doing from a servo standpoint what do we what do we check in there basically you're just checking to make sure that the boiler is modulating that you're you're going from low fire to high fire mid fire as your load changes as long as it's doing that then the system is working like it's supposed to all right next thing we'll go to is the uh, indicating lights or running lights i mean obviously something that's always lit up and I remember as a kid I felt kind of like Buddy the Elf I'd want to just walk in and just start touching all the lights so uh, why don't you go through all of the the lights for us tell us a little bit about what what we have to look for well the lights gonna tell you kind of what's going on with the boiler and the burner if your limit is made then the light is on telling you that it'll typically tell you whether you're burning gas or oil and it'll tell you if there's a problem if there's a low water condition or a flame failure it's going to tell you from the lights if the lights are working that's okay. why you need to check them so it's not really the, the, the last resort, you're not totally trusting the lights, is that what no, you're saying? No, they're just, they're just visual indicators quickly, so you need to check them like the low water cutoff, make sure that the light comes on when you blow the boiler down. Okay, so you're kind of putting that, something happens here, make sure that uh, the light comes on. Right. Okay. Well, I've been in a lot of boiler rooms and there's leaks all over the place, whether it's water leak or um, some type of a steam leak, of course, and, and we definitely don't want gas leaks. But why don't you go through and, and talk about where some leaks could be? Well, as we talked about earlier with the, the gauge glass, that's a very good place for leaks on the gauge glass and gauge cocks. But you can have any valve, especially the packings, you're going to apt to have leaks. They need to regular maintenance on tightening that packing up or repacking the valves. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also have flue gas leaks from around the doors. So it's a good idea, you know, just run your hand away from the door, don't touch it because it's hot. 
if the boiler is running. And make sure there's not any air blowing out around the burner. You can see the gasket material, that will get old and eventually is going to have a leak someplace. So check them to make sure you don't have leaks in the boiler room. Okay. What about stack? What? Same thing with the stack. I mean, it's open, so you shouldn't have a leak there. But again, you got a lot of heat. It heats up, it cools off. The gasket material gets old and brittle and will start leaking. So you need to make sure it stays sealed up. And one other place is um, hand holes, man ways. Sure, hand you know. holes, man ways. I mean, even the heads on the low water cutoffs. You can have steam leaks out of your controls, any of that. So it's, I mean, just visual, check everything to make sure there's no leaks. And if there's a leak, fix it. Don't let it keep going and get worse. Right, and I think the biggest thing with the leaking part is exactly what you just said. And that is as you're walking through the boiler room and there's something that's leaking, get it fixed right away. So Yeah, the longer you leave it, the worse it's gonna get. And it's gonna eventually, if you leave a valve leaking, it's going to cut the stem to where you can't fix it. You've got to replace it. Okay. Well, there you have it. Um, all the weekly maintenance, Mike. Thanks for hanging out with us again today. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, appreciate Michael stopping by and talking to us a little bit about weekly boiler maintenance. You know, boiler equipment failures, they can be dangerous and typically result in lost productivity and revenue. Scaling a boiler on the water side will cause overheating and thus result in a boiler failure. When this occurs, sometimes there can be catastrophic failures that results in a water side or fire side explosions. This has more serious consequences, including injuries and facility damage. With the right preventative maintenance plan, these issues can be avoided or greatly reduced. Well, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to that YouTube channel. And as always, if you like our videos, please share them. And we also have a new mobile website, so please check it out, and we'll see you next time on the boiling point.